presentation of Huddle Up Nittany Lion fans on your local public television station has been made possible in part by Everett Cash Mutual Insurance Company, providing insurance for farmers by farmers since 1913. ECM Insurance Group of Everett. McClanahan's Penn State Room, offering a complete assortment of Penn State gifts and apparel. Downtown State College or online anytime at PennStateRoom.com. Inspirations, Milroy, Pennsylvania, featuring Penn State Corian tables and house signs. Information at 717-667-6314. Seconds to 400. Joe Paterno is hoisted upon the shoulders of his players, and we have just witnessed history. You'll never see this again. One man, one school, 400 wins. The great man has ascended to a height no one in Division I football has ever been to before. Coach Paterno, on behalf of the university, all of your former players, many of whom are with us here this evening, your great coaching staff, and the greatest college football fans in America here at Beaver Stadium. We want to present you with a small token of our appreciation for being the greatest college football coach ever, Coach Joe Paterno. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. No drop that sucker. No fumbles. Hey, hang on. Huh? Yeah, I'll go. Got it. Hey, Larry. I know you all want to get home. <laughs> I, I want to thank. I want to thank President Spagna and Tim Curley for making this such a special night. But most of all, I want to thank the guy. Guys who have played for us, and I mean us, I mean Penn State, and, I, and, and all the coaches. People ask me why I stayed here so long, and you know what? Look around, look around. I stayed here because I love you all. Now! Now that the celebration's over, let's go beat Ohio State. A magical night for Joe and Sue Paterno and the Penn State football family, but then again, it's been magical for 45 seasons as the Nittany Lions defeated Northwestern 35-21 to for Joe's 400th victory. Hi again, everyone. I'm Steve Jones, and welcome to Huddle Up, Nittany Lion fans. And let's go back to Saturday night and how it happened. The Nittany Lions and Northwestern at Beaver Stadium. The Nittany Lions, 399 in the books for Joe. Northwestern, though, tries to spoil the party. Dan Purser, quarterback, draw. Northwestern takes the lead. Then Drake Dunsmore, a great catch in the back of the end zone. 21-0. Penn State comes back seven seconds ago in the half. Brett Brack with a great catch of his own. Then to tie the game, 42 yards to Derek Moy, 21-21. The Nittany Lion defense then stepped up. Michael Motti had a big second half. They put pressure on Dan Persa. Four sacks. This one here by Sean Stanley and Ali Agbu. The Penn State defense making its presence felt. Then the first career touchdown for Silas Red gives the Nittany Lions the lead. And finally, the screen pass that worked all day. Johnny Trotman, Stefan Wisniewski, big blocks. Evan Royster into the end zone, 35-21. 399 becomes 400 for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions. Time now for our player of the game, our Penn State Alumni Association fan pulse, courtesy of our good friends at Fight on State. You chose Matt McGloin, who came off the bench with 225 yards and four touchdowns, garnering 56% of the vote. All right, time now to bring in my broadcast partner on the Penn State Sports Radio Network, Jack Ham. And Jack, we've worked together for 11 years, but you've been around Joe Paterno since the late 60s as a player. What did Saturday night and 400 mean to you? I think, number one, that uh, as they were scrolling down all 400 of those wins on the scoreboards, I mean, you, you just, you, you just, you're amazed at what he has done. And, uh, you know, he was, he was a coach hands on back then. And, and anybody who made a mistake on that field, I mean, he was all over you in practice. And he, the same way he is today, I mean, he has been able to, you talk about great for college football. So glad he never went pro football, and he had a number of opportunities. It's great for Penn State. He put Penn State on the map, and uh, there'll only be one Joe Paterno.
No doubt about that. Jack, you're not only in the College Football Hall of Fame, but you're in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. When you're selected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, you're allowed to select a presenter, someone that introduces you to the crowd in Canton. You selected Joe Paterno. Why? You know what, when you're 17, 18 years old, and uh, you can go in a lot of different directions as a young kid, I mean, you talk about someone who grounds you. We're not talking about football here, but just as a, as a young man and going into college, and he, he puts your priorities in order. It's, it's your family, your education, and then football. And he always told us, the only way you get in trouble is you get those things out of order. And, you know, you buy into Joe Paterno. And uh, there, there are life lessons that you, I use today from my football days at Penn State. And he did more for me to get me on the right track, also athletically, and by putting me as first team my freshman year at spring ball, that really kind of changed my career. He was by far my number one choice, and I, I don't even know who would be number two. At the opening of the show, we showed Joe's speech in Beaver Stadium, and at the end he said, let's go beat Ohio State. How much did that one statement tell you about Joe Paterno? I think without question, that is a, it's a key to his philosophy. It's, it's what am I, what am I going to do today or tomorrow to get this, get this football team better from September until November. And you see this team now kind of growing and improving each week right now and a, and a great comeback win. But uh, uh, that, that's, that's Joe. That's, that's his philosophy. And, uh, you know, the, the fans who all stayed there after that game for that ceremony, I mean, it's a, it's a tribute to him. But he realized he, he, he has made this the Penn State family and, uh, and now we have 107, 108,000 fans up there, uh, you know, honoring him for his 400th win. You're so right about the Penn State family. And of course, you've been a part of it for a long time. And Jack, there's a ball game to talk about, and we'll bring Jack Hammond a little bit later to talk about the showdown with Ohio State on Saturday at Beaver Stadium. Time now for our freeze frame presented by State College Framing Company. Ah, the fans celebrating 400 in Beaver Stadium. Also, Joe Paterno with a sweet ride after 400. And Joe and Sue Paterno, the heads of the Penn State family, together after the game, basking in the glow. And what about the post-game reaction? Well, Joe Paterno had an opportunity after the game to finally sit down and reflect on his career and 400 wins. Coach, uh, congratulations. Uh, can you sum up your, uh, your thoughts uh, on that ceremony and just uh, on reaching this milestone? Well, it was a surprise, uh, to be honest with you. I didn't expect it. I think that was awfully nice of, of uh, President Spanier and Tim. And, you know, and I just, what can you say, Neil? You know, I mean, it's, uh, I've been very, very fortunate. We've had some great kids. And when I say great kids, I not only mean my own, uh, to, and uh, my grandkids, but the guys that have played here have just been great. And to see those fans, st all of them stick around like that was very, was very moving for me. And uh, but you know we get three more games, <laughs> and we got a big one coming up this week. And uh, I have to be honest with you, I'm gonna think, start thinking about that. But it was, a, it was a great experience, a, a great, great evening for us. And I was particularly pleased that the kids got down as they did and, and they hung together. And I think that this will be a great lesson for them. Joe, could you have uh, scripted a better way to win this game, <laughs> to be that far behind? It was almost like the Ohio State game in, in 01, a lot, a lot that way. Well, if I had my choice, I would have made it a little bit easier. <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't, uh, uh, you know, I try, I try to say it to, to, to be as honest as I can with you about it. And I, but I, I, you know, how uh, I'm just, you know, I, well, there's a good bunch of kids, and not we're not there yet, and uh, there's a the stages that we were going through, and this was an important part of it. And uh, you know, I had hoped that somewhere down the line that they would would uh, have a tough tough game, and they'd stick in there and they'd go. I thought that up to a point we did against Michigan, but uh, to, to see them come back the way they came back was, uh, you know, really. And that sounds 
phony, but really was probably more important to me than than whether it was 350 wins or whether it was 400 wins. I just just think some of these kids now know what it takes to to get it done, and that that's a big uh, to me was um, the important thing. You know, I, I'm just so happy that I'm honored and pleased that I'm going to be here on this 400th win and, and, and have the time for this monumental. We'll probably never see this again in, in, in our lifetime. Coach Joe Paterno, what, what can you say? I mean, I came up here with the, uh, with the hopes of, like everybody else, that he reaches his 400, and uh, that's probably a milestone that will never be reached again. We want to get our monk because he was a great football player. Ranger's a good football player. Astorino's a football player. He really is a good football player. It will be a tough football game for us. I think every game we play is going to be tough. They'll play a tough football game. Mine's a good football team. Iowa's a good football team. When you get those kinds of things happening to you, you're going to get licked. We don't play well, we'll get licked. Find out how you can purchase episodes of the classic TV series, Joe Paterno's TV Quarterbacks, by visiting WPSU.org backslash TVQB. Conference call time brought to you by our good friends at Straw Beer. And let's take a look at the Big Ten standings. You see at the top, Michigan State is right there. The Spartans at the top of the heap. But the Nittany Lions have moved themselves into that number five position with a three and two record. You see Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Iowa just above Penn State in the standings. All right, let's get to the games now. Iowa will be at Northwestern this week. A year ago at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Northwestern walked in, knocked Iowa from the ranks of the unbeaten, and knocked out quarterback Ricky Stanzi in the process. This time around, the games at Ryan Field in Evanston, we bring in Gary Dolphin, the play-by-play -play voice of the Iowa Hawkeye Radio Network. And Gary, this year, what's the incentive for Iowa? The game they lost last year ended their 9-0 start. They only lost by a touchdown, but it was at home, and, and I was pretty protective of the Kinnick Stadium turf. Uh, that said, uh, Northwestern, uh, you know, kind of like Iowa's had Penn State's number for whatever reason or reasons, Northwestern's had uh, Iowa's number. The, not only have they won three straight at Kinnick Stadium, but they won four of the last five in the series, and, and who knows? For, uh, there, there's no one particular reason. I know this, Iowa has to cover kicks uh, better. They had nine penalties last week for 65 yards. That, as much as anything, uh, prevented them from perhaps putting the game away against Indiana. Uh, and, and they did shoot themselves in the feet a number of times when they got into the red zone with dumb penalties. And as for Northwestern, going after that seventh win on the season and trying to get back to 500 in the conference. Next up, Indiana going to Camp Randall to take on Wisconsin. Indiana started out the non-conference schedule, went 4-0, but since then they have not won a game in the conference. We bring in Don Fisher, the play-by-play -play voice of the Indiana Hoosier Radio Network. Don, what's been the difference between the non-conference schedule and the conference schedule? Yeah, they were hitting big plays all over the place, and now they're not finding that to be the case. They're just not as consistent at the offensive end of the football field these days. It's probably a partial because of, of uh, limited offensive line play. They've been hurt there with a couple of positions. They've also had a lot of hits on Ben Chappell, the quarterback, especially from Ohio State on. Uh, he has really taken a beating, and he is not the same football player we saw early in the season. I think his mechanics have suffered because of some of the injuries that he's dealing with. The injuries aren't sufficient enough to keep him out of the game. And yet, uh, you know, <laughs> on Monday he's limping pretty good and got a boot on his leg. Penn State will take on Indiana at FedEx Field next week. Other games of the conference, Minnesota plays in Champaign against Illinois. At ross H Stadium, it's Purdue against Michigan. The team with the bye week, Michigan State. Joe Paterno always says, look ahead. Well, it's time to look ahead now for the Nittany Lion head coach looking to Columbus at Ohio State. Coach, do you feel that this has evolved into as much of a rivalry as you have on the schedule? Can you speak to the value of a, of a rival? Uh, is it, you know, maybe a big 33 relationship or um, 
you know, how important is having a big rival, and is this one it for you guys? Oh, well, no, I don't think there's any question it's a big rival for us. Adjacent states, we recruit, I mean, we, we, we work awfully hard to try to, to recruit some people that they do. Uh, we've had some good football games with them lately. They've obviously had the upper hand. No, I think it's, it's whether it's the, you know, the, I don't know what the top rivalry is. They all seem like the big game <laughs> uh, at the time, but it's certainly one of them. One of them. I, you know, I was a little disappointed that, uh, you know, in the way the schedule was, you know, they give, uh, you know, we had to play Michigan after an open date, and we got to play these guys after an open date. You know, you would hope that, uh, you know, you wouldn't, uh, when we, we had started out that Michigan State was going to be the, the end of the year game for us, and then when we changed, the Big Ten changed, they, Michigan State's not the game we play at the end of the year. Yeah, now all of a sudden Nebraska is going to be the team we're going to play every year and so forth. Uh, so things have changed, uh, but there's certainly a big game. It's a, it's a big game for us. I don't know whether it's as big a game for Ohio State as it is for us, because they've always in the back of their heads, I think, it, it, there's Michigan there. But uh, it's a big game for us, no, no question about that. And if there's, and, uh, yeah, it'll be tough. Joe Paterno is Pennsylvania, he's Penn State. He sets a great example for the for the people of Pennsylvania, for the youth of Pennsylvania, for his students, for all the kids that graduate from this program. And the fact that I had the opportunity to be here today when he's going for his 400th win, and we're going to bring it home for him today, is so very, very important. And our thanks to the governor-elect Tom Corbin for the time he gave us on Saturday. Joined now by Mark Brennan from Fight on State. Mark, as always, it's great to have you with us. 400 wins. How can you put that in perspective? Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I was down there on the field and uh, just to, to, at the end of the game doing my videotaping and just the, the genuine enthusiasm uh, was incredible. And, it, you know, it just wasn't from the star players. Guys like Stephon Green, who have had kind of a, a tough go of it the last couple of weeks. Kevin Newsom, uh, who's kind of been, you know, out of the quarterback mix now. Uh, all of these people were just so into it. You have the redshirt freshmen boosting them up on their shoulders. Uh, I just thought it was uh, just a terrific moment. I was uh, thrilled to be a part of it, and we're never going to see it again, Steve. As you said, you know, one man at, the, at, at one school, 400 wins, never going to happen again. And now let's talk about the game itself. Uh, the last time Penn State was down 21 nothing and rallied to win was at Illinois in 1994, an epic game in the history of Penn State football. Now to get 400, this program, this group of kids, duplicates the feat. Yeah, and I thought that was one of the amazing things about it. Of course, you never want to fall behind by three <laughs> touchdowns, but to come back and show the heart and inspiration in all those things. And I think the other thing a lot of people are missing, Penn State made some great strategic moves at halftime. What better time for that to happen, for the coaches to come up big, and not to just Joe, but his assistants, than in his 400th win. I think it really speaks to the effective job that the coaching staff did, and uh, you know, kudos to the coaching staff, A-plus grade for this game. And Matt McGloin comes off the bench he throws for 225 yards mark and four touchdowns what confidence this kid is showing it's just absolutely amazing uh, you know what it could not have been easy for him to, to to be moved to the second team after his great effort the week before but he comes off the bench plays exceptionally well that drive right before the half to me uh, you know that I don't think they win the game unless they move all those all that far uh, toward the end of the half score that touchdown and set themselves up for a great second half nine plays and 91 yards to get the job done to put them back in the game, but also the defense, Mark, responds in the second half. They shut down Dan Purcell. They had four sacks, and Michael Motti had a big second half. Yeah, Motti didn't necessarily start uh, strong in this game, but boy, what a second half he had. He's finally playing as if that knee's not bothering you. Look at the emotion. That's what I love about this kid. He's not only a great player, but he's bringing that emotion. It's too bad that he was bumped up last year, was out last year. I think he could have been a really good player for them last year, but it looks like he's finally getting to 100%, and this kid is a big 10 caliber, all Big Ten caliber linebacker when he's 100%, and he's there now. And playing instinctively now, too, Mark. All right, Joe Paterno said, look ahead to Ohio State. That's exactly what we're about to do. Let's go to the standings, and they tell you right now, with a three-game winning streak, the Nittany Lions have vaulted themselves into the number five spot. They're right 
behind Ohio State in the standings. Let's bring back my broadcast partner, Jack Cam. Jack, let's look ahead to Ohio State now. When you look at the Buckeyes, Dan Heron, Brandon Sane, Terrell Pryor, what about Ohio State's ability to run the football as a key in this game? I think, number one, it's patience right now. I think Jim Trestle does a good job of realizing what he has offensively, and until you stop him running the football, and they didn't get a lot of big plays in the running game, but they, we could never get the lead on them last year and force him into throwing the football, and so he will be very, very patient. I think that's the key. I mean, they ran it over 40 times last year, and he, you know, it may not be the most exciting football, but it's winning football for Ohio State. And that is one of the keys right there. It's winning for, for football for Ohio State. They are patient. They eat the clock. They don't turn the ball over, Mark. What do you think about the Ohio State offense? Well, that's a great point. I mean, everybody talks about Terrell Pryor. This is not a one-man gang. This is a great uh, offense, and they lead the Big Ten in time of possession, third in the nation in time of possession. That's one of the real keys. I think Penn State has to chew up some clock on its end. All right, now let's bring Jack back in, talk about Ohio State defense. When you look at the defense, they're called the Silver Bullets, Jack. 48% three and outs. That front, what is the key up front? Number one, it starts with their front four. I mean, their front four is a dominating front four. We talk so much about Iowa's defensive line. Ohio State is solid up and down. I mean, they've had problems with special team scoring points, but for the most part, this defense has only given up 13 points per game. And I think you play to that strength as well. And I go back to Trestle. He realizes he doesn't have a porous defense out there that he's concerned about. Like other teams, maybe the Big Ten, like Michigan, he's got an outstanding defense. So you play to your strength as well. And that's what makes Ohio State a solid football team. They are, they are, there is no weakness in their game, except for the fact of special teams. Jack, as always, thanks so much. And Jack will join me for the broadcast beginning at 2 o'clock from Ohio Stadium in Columbus. All right, let's get to some of the keys in this one, Mark. When you look at the matchup, especially against that Ohio State defense, what really jumps out to you? Well, I think one of the things Penn State has to do, and have done a great job of it the last couple weeks, we've talked, I talked about it earlier, ball control. Uh, that you have to chew up clock against this team. I don't know that you're going to be able to go in there and run, 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 you know, for however many yards. But last week against Northwestern, they did a great job with short passing. The screen game came into effect. I really think one of the keys to winning this game is holding on to that ball as long as you can to keep that offense off the field for Ohio State. And it's tough to do against this Ohio State defense. I mentioned 48% three and outs. And the thing about this defense, it's not full of guys you look at in great stats, all Americans. This is just a very well balanced, great across the board defense, kind of what Jim trestle has been doing since he got to Ohio State. All right, the other part, too, is that you look at them. They've been banged up defensively, yet they're still producing this way. For Penn State, ball control, obviously, you mentioned, is a key in this one because they did that against Michigan and kept them off the field. Yeah, and the, the, the million-dollar question, it's much Michigan's a defense, not a good defense. Northwestern, a little bit better. It was nice to see Penn State step up. To me, another key is the play of the offensive line. We could talk about McGloin and the running backs and receivers all we want. The Penn State offensive line has improved steadily over the last few weeks. This is going to be one of its toughest tests of the season. Let's see if it could keep up the improvement. All right, e ECM prediction time. No need to bring in a guest. Mark, your prediction for Saturday at the Horseshoe. I think this is going to be a tough one for Penn State. I'm picking Ohio State 24, Penn State 13. I do think Penn State will play better uh, than it did early in the year against some of the power opponents, but I just don't know that the Nittany Lions have enough guns. Yeah, one thing about Jack, he thinks special teams is a key for Penn State. They can actually help swing it. Penn State's had solid special teams play all year. Absolutely. Turnovers as well. Ohio State leads the nation in turnover margin. Yeah. The last thing you could do is kick that ball over. And if you're fortunate enough to get a pick from Pryor, things could change. If Penn State gets a turnover, wins the uh, special teams battle, has a puncher's chance out there. All right, let's go bring it back now to Joe Paterno because 400 wins. Mark, uh, you've been a witness to a lot of this over the years. What was the feeling when you went home that night and actually had a moment to reflect? Well, it's amazing. I've been covering Penn State football since the mid-'80s, and I've only been here for half of his wins. Uh, it, it's just an amazing thing. I've said it over and over again. Sometimes when you cover the team on a daily basis, you, you, you don't have that perspective. You have to take a little bit of a step away and realize that we're seeing history. We saw history, an epic game, and I was thrilled to be able to cover it. Mark, as always, thanks so much. Appreciate it. The head coach, Joe Paterno. Joe and Sue Paterno are the heads of the Penn State football family, and it truly is a family that they've put together. They care very much about everybody within their family, whether it's players, staff members, assistant coaches, and their families. It's been done with integrity. It's been done with hard work. And it's been done with Joe's brilliant football mind. He's outworked everybody along the way to his credit, 
and he's picked up 400 wins along the way. The 400 really is symbolic of everything over the last 45 years. 45 spectacular years for Joe and Sue Paterno at Penn State, and the Penn State family can't thank them enough for what they have done for all of us, this area, and this university. We holding one of these up. We just gonna keep it rolling, that's all. It feel great, man. We finally got there and get him that win. He deserved it. He deserved every bit of this celebration, man. You'll never see this again. One man, one school, 400 wins. Presentation of Huddle Up Nittany Lion fans on your local public television station has been made possible in part by Everett Cash Mutual Insurance Company, insuring restaurants and other commercial businesses since 1913. ECM Insurance Group of Everett. McClanahan's Penn State Room, offering a complete assortment of Penn State gifts and apparel. Downtown State College or online anytime at pennstateroom.com. Inspirations, Milroy, Pennsylvania, featuring Penn State Corian tables and house signs. Information at 717-667-6314. This has been a production of WPSU.